Lance, appreciate you hopping on the show once again. And the big story right now in Buffalo is Bowen Byram. He's taken over. Uh, talk <laughs> a little bit about uh, Bowen Byram's immediate impact with the Sabres and what's been so pr- impressive about his game. No, he fits perfectly with the way they want to play. Gets up, gets up in the play, aggressive, helps them get out of their own zone, but he's also quick to defend. And he, it's, you know, they, they haven't eased him into the lineup. He's playing 25 minutes a game. He's on the power play. He's on the penalty kill. He's on the first pair with Rasmus Dahlin. And what's really just impressed me is just how smart he is, how he thinks the game. Like His talent has never been the question. It's only been helped. He's put himself in bad spots at times where he's left himself susceptible to, to hits that have knocked him out of the lineup for times. That's something that he's going to have to take care of. But right now, you know, when you lose your captain, Kyle Lockposo, and your leading scorer, Casey Middlesad, in the same week, you need to bring in help, especially when this is a season where they needed to break that playoff drought. It's going to be quite the mountain to climb for them to gain ground and, and dig themselves out of the hole they created. But he's been a jolt in their lineup, and it's 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 really given hope to that room that, you know, it's, it's not like a slight step back rebuild type of situation. They brought in a guy who they feel is going to help them be better. And so far he has in different ways, the middle stat, of course. Yeah. And I think with Byram, I think taking the gloves off of him or the handcuffs or whatever you want to say, that's the right decision because he's been sort of, you know, protected in Colorado. There was never opportunity to behind McCarr behind Taves. So now they're like, Go spread your wings and go just be you. And clearly um, it's working. I'm sure he'll come back down to earth at some point, but he is a tremendous player. And I think people are going to really get to see just how good he is. Here's another young guy I want to ask you about, Lance. Um, Devin Levi. And, and I know he, he, he's he been in the minors more than not this year. Um, the co- My co-host on Morning Cup of Hockey Picked him to be the Calder winner this year. I told Johnny, you're insane. Goaltenders, it just doesn't work. I thought the plan by putting him in the NHL right away, I didn't think that was a smart decision. How is the organization feeling about his progression in his first full season pro? And do they still look at him as the quote-unquote savior to the net long term? Well, right now, Uko Pekalukin and his numbers since January 1st, he's among the best in the league. So right now, he's he's the number one guy in this organization. Now, Devin Levi, I think, you know, he went on that great run late last season where he won games in Madison Square Garden against the New York Rangers. He beat the Rangers at home. Like, he almost beat the Florida Panthers on the road in a game the Sabres had to win. Like, he has performed at a high level at big stages, even at a young player in the NHL, which really tempted this team to try to push him further. How much can he accomplish? Is he going to be the guy who who accomplishes what really no other goalie has going right from NCAA to NHL? And he hit a wall. It, it, it showed that he has areas of his game that he needs to improve. Now he's been exceptional in Rochester. It's where he needs to be. Like you need to be patient with goaltending prospects. And Uko Pekalukin is a classic example of it takes time. You have to stick with guys. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. And Levi has gone through those this season. Right now, though, he's on a really good track in Rochester. Like the Amherst need to get in the playoffs so he can play playoff level hockey. He is carrying them right now. You know, right now, this organization, they're going to have to sign UPL to a a contract this summer. He's an RFA. That's going to be an expensive ticket, whether it's a three-year, five-year deal. But it sets up nicely next season, guys, to where they're not going to have to rush Levi into the number one job. Now, their plan is to have him in the NHL and have that as their tandem, UPL and Levi. Now, of course, that can change. We'll see what happens down the stretch. But right now, like having Lukanen break through and perform like this, it is so big for Levi to where it it almost saved this organization from itself and, and forced them to finally break up their three goalie death chart and put Levi where he belongs. And it's not even just performance based, really. It's he needs those games. He needs those reps to where you're not having that pressure to be the number one NHL guy. And you can perform and work on your game in a different setting in Rochester with the talent that they have. It, it's a good place to do it. You mentioned UPL, he best save percentage in the NHL amongst starters since Jan 1. You look at the Sabres record since Jan 1, well, better than it was before Jan 1. Is it too simple to just say they finally started getting some saves? What else kind of started to go right for the Sabres around the midway point of the season? Team defense has definitely improved. Forwards in particular, they're starting to backcheck better. Their details are more are more in tune. Like 
this this coaching staff, this organization, when they brought up young players like Paterka, Quinn, and there are there are others, even Owen Power, right? Like you had you were able to break young players into the league, and you had to sort of let them play through their mistakes. Now, when you're the expectations are different, the standards are different. And gradually, it took them too long. They did improve their team defense a bit, where if you look at the high danger chances since January 1st, it's trending in a much better direction. Like, this this organization needs to be a better defensive group. Like, last year, they scored a lot of goals, but that's not sustainable. They're trying to to find an identity that is sustainable, that's going to allow them to win. And, yes, UPL is a huge part of that success, but they're also defending better. You know, now they need to fix the power play because that's the one area it's killing them. You know, that's where you're, you're seeing the drop in points in production from guys like Thompson, Tuck, and others. They are only five points back of the Islanders. I know the Islanders have a couple games in hand, but even though they're staying somewhat in the race, I want to take a bigger picture look at the Sabres to wrap this up. This summer, how aggressive do you think they're going to be turning this thing around? Is it still stay the course, elevate some young pieces, or do you think this is a summer where, I mean, we just saw them make a big trade at the deadline with middle staff for Byram. Do you think we could see more big moves like that in Buffalo? Absolutely. I think they're they're at the point now with the prospects they have signed, the ones they have in Rochester, they have to deal from that that area of strength and and, and draft picks. They, they have plenty in this organization now where you have the ammunition, you have the cap space, and they have to go get a center now. They lost middle stat. It's a huge loss. There's no doubt about it. You look at the lineup. It, it created a big hole that is going to take time to fill. Peyton Krebs, is he going to be the guy who steps in as the three the three C? Right now, there's there's some serious questions about whether he's ready to make that jump, given the way that his development has gone. So I do see them going out and getting a center. They've got to tweak their, their, their D a little bit because now they've got seven left-handed guys. they got two on the right. How is that going to play out? Darlene's really good on his right, so they're okay with that. But what does it mean? Do they need to go gra- grab a, a more physical defenseman, somebody who's harder to play against? You know, They want to reshape their bottom six a little bit, but – that Byron move is it's the precursor to to much more to come for the summer for sure. Will be an interesting stretch drive and an interesting summer in Buffalo. Lance, appreciate your time today, man. Always a pleasure, guys. Take care. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider Frank Zaravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.